Hello everyone and welcome to today's online workshop. We were five minutes behind schedule, uh, but I think that's okay with you guys. Um, how's the sound? Can you guys hear me well? Is the sound, uh, am I loud enough? Am I too loud? Could be too loud as well. You know, as I can see here, I'm a bit too loud, so. Uh, but let me know uh, how the sound is. Right, <coughs> um, today is a special day because it is my birthday. So on this birthday, Thursday, leave a happy birthday in the comments. Um, we are uh, doing this workshop. Unfortunately, it is a birthday with a twist because this morning I woke up and tested positive for uh, COVID-19. So that's not very nice on my birthday, but um, I feel okay-ish. Uh, I hope I don't look too ill. Um, but let's do it anyway. Let's see how far we can get. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, right. So I sent out an email um, with lots of uh, materials, three materials and some questions um, with some links. Um, how to write a review, my video on how to write a review and my video on how to write uh, a paragraph. Now I sent out those videos um, because I want to make it a real workshop, which means that I really want to write a review at the end of this workshop. I am going to cover some of the uh, basics of those videos. Now, I'm going to say a bit about paragraph structure, um, but of course we want to actually write something and that's, um, that's of course the most important thing. Uh, thank you, I will, I will take rest as soon as this ends. I'm going back to bed. Um, I do have my official COVID test this afternoon. Um, so that also needs to be done. But then I'm going to bed, um, quarantine for a week and, you know, see how, how we feel at the end of this week, at the end of next week. Right. Um, so let me know where you're from. Um, we have eight people now. So let me know where you're from uh, in the comments. And uh, let's get started with our review writing workshop. Right. So, as you guys can see, I have I'm constantly looking at all of my screens. Um, I have one screen with the PowerPoint and one screen with my PowerPoint presenter and the chat, so that I can answer your questions. Um, there is some lag, so um, it might be that. There is some lag um, with your answers and the with your questions and my answers, but we'll cover that. Um, if you didn't get the materials in the mail, that is, uh, it's not a problem uh, because we're going to cover everything anyway. It was just, um, you know, with the link and with some uh, with a review I would like you to read and some some the videos. But if you didn't get it or you ha didn't have time to do it, that's fine. We'll cover them anyway. So what are we going to do today? Um, the workshop consists of these parts. We will start by looking at what are the parts of a good review? What do we need to write a good review? Then we're going to look at the Encanto review, which I um, sent out in the mail. Um, and uh, we're going to see whether we're able to look at uh, these parts and if we can find these parts in that review. Then we'll move on to review language, which are basically adjectives. So we're briefly going to mention adjectives and look at the adjectives they use in that review. And finally, we'll look at a review outline and we'll write a review together. So I think we have lots of things to do and I think we'll manage um, to do them anyway. Let me quickly see whether there are any questions. No questions so far. That's good. Um, right. Now, you take this moment to think of something you would like to review. Um, what are things you want to write your review on? Take a few minutes to think of what you, um, what you want to write your review on. Could be anything. Um, Uh, 
Right. So what are the basic parts of a review? What does a review uh, consist of? We have several parts in a review. Uh, of course, we need to have some sort of an introduction. So this is a review uh, I took. I've been using this as an example for quite some time now. Um, and a review always starts with an introduction. And we want to include the title of the thing we're reviewing. We want to include the year. When was it written or published or produced? We want to include the author and some extra information, um, like, you know, in my review, I'm going to give some stats. Um, maybe you want to name a few main characters, actors, people who are important for the thing that you're reviewing. And then we get our uh, summary. Now, if you're writing a review on the book, this is where you want to include a summary of the plot. So what are the things important in that uh, plot? that you can mention. Now, as always, this is not where you want to put a lot of um, information. Um, you know, you're not describing in fine detail what everything was in the book or in the story. You only want to give some um, basic and most important facts of the book or whatever you're reviewing. Then you get your arguments, and your arguments are, of course, the most important thing. And um, you want to follow a good paragraph structure. So you want to have your topic sentence, your level 2 sentence, your level 3 sentence, um, because that's basically what you... That, that creates a structured paragraph. So as you can see, we also have this structure here as well. We have a nice topic sentence, one criticism of the film, uh, the film is never boring. Oh, the film is never boring, mainly because. Um, so a nice structure. These are our arguments. We have something that's good and we have something that's bad. And then we get a conclusion in which the author summarizes their review. Um, it's unforgettable. One of the best films. Don't miss it. See it in 3D, etc., etc. There is a clear recommendation. Don't miss it. See it in 3D. Um, and there is there's some sort of opinion as a final remark as well. So these are the parts of a review that we um, we need to include. Right, so we have our introduction, we have a brief summary, and brief is really brief. We don't want to dive into all of the details. Then we have our main body and a conclusion. So that makes sense. All right, these are the basic parts of a review. Now, in the advanced class, I'm going to show you a review that doesn't really follow these things because the the main body doesn't really follow this structure and that kind of a summary mixed up in the main body. Very nice, very well written. Um, but you know, as a as an intermediate learner, this is where you want to start a nice structured review. So, let's have a look at the Encanto review. Encanto is a, is a film by Disney. Uh, who has seen Encanto? Anybody seen Encanto? Very nice film. The music is very nice. We have someone from Spain in our group. What, is, what does Encanto mean? Can you tell us what Encanto means? Yeah, um, so Encanto does mean something like charm, a spell. And this is a review from The Guardian, 
written by uh, Simran Hans, and she writes lots of reviews for um, The Observer, which is a part of The Guardian. Um, and we can see whether we can find the parts of a review in this review. So let's have a look together. If you have the glossary, which was also in your email, if all is well, um, you can find lots of the words that I um, highlighted. So I picked out some of the words that I think that you should know at B2C1 level, and I put them in the glossary. Now, I didn't put the um, definition and translation there because I wanted you to look them up yourself. Um, and you can use a dictionary for that or something online, and of course, include a translation in your language. Right, so let's have a look at this review. Um, Encanto review, Disney musical casts its spell with a little help from Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is um, an actor or an actress. Um, right, so what can we see? The Madrigal clan, which is a group of people, are a little unusual. The burly Louisa, voiced by Jessica Darrow, possesses hu superhuman strength. Isabella, Diane Guerrero, has the ability to make flowers burst into bloom, which means that they start to grow. Peppa, Carolina Gaetan, con can control the weather with her mood. It's only bespectacled Mirabelle, Stephanie Beatrice, who hasn't been blessed with magic. An outsider in her own family, she fits right into, the lineage, into a lineage of recent Disney animation heroines, including Moana and Frozen's Elsa. When the Madrigal's prized enchanted candle begins to dim, and with it everyone's powers, cracks appear in the foundation of the family casa. It's Mirabelle who must figure out how to keep the flame alight. Set among the mountains of Colombia, this sparky musical covers plenty of well-trodden terrain, including sibling revelry and the crushing weight of family expectations. What's interesting and unexpected is the film's subtle acknowledgement of culturally specific generational trauma and displacement. We can't lose our home, repeats matriarch Abuela Alma Maria Cecilia Botero, who recounts being forced from her house by unknown forces once before. The film also boasts a soundtrack of earworms written by Lin-Manuel. Uh, good evening. Um, Miranda. The slinky salsa-influenced We Don't Talk About Bruno rattled around in my head for days. Have you heard We Don't Talk About Bruno? Do you know We Don't Talk About Bruno? Very, uh, very nice song. So, we don't really have this structure that I talked about in my PowerPoint slide in this review. But there are things that are there. So, we have some sort of introduction. We could say that maybe this, the part I skipped, could be our introduction. Um, then... We have this part, which basically covers the entire film, and it ends with... It doesn't give a spoiler. Um, it ends with the main question of the film, Mirabel, who has to figure out how to keep the flame alight. So this is our summary. And then we get some sort of argument. So this is both her arguments and her conclusion. So as I mentioned, we don't really have this structure that I showed you in the PowerPoint, but it's everything is kind of in there. Now, it could be that she didn't have the very large number of words so that she wasn't allowed, basically, to really have a good introduction and conclusion, and that she focused on this. But in general, what do we think? Did she like this film or didn't she like the film? Let's look at some questions. Did she like the film or didn't she like the film?
Let's see what you guys come up with. So did she like the film or didn't she like the film? Okay, uh, neutral side, she likes it. Um, thank you very much. I would say she does like the film. Um, if you look at the number of stars, she gave it four out of five stars, which is relatively positive, right? It's more on the positive side. So I would say that she really liked the film. Um, then, how do we know this? How do we know that she likes the film? Let's look at some, art, some adjectives. So as I said, we want to use adjectives in our review. Um, <coughs> adjectives are words, that used to are, are words used to describe nouns. And you want to use those ad adjectives to describe your feelings. So for the thing that you are reviewing, what are adjectives you can actually use? Are there interesting adjectives you can use for the thing that you are reviewing? Think about that for a second. Um, are there adjectives you can use? And we're going to look at some adjectives in this, um, in this review. So let's see what we can find. I'm going to make the adjectives, let's see, what color shall we make the adjective green? Positive, green, I think that's nice. So we have the word unusual, nice adjective. Um, burly. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Um, be spectacled, of, co of course. Be spectacled is also a very nice adjective. And now in their in their review part, basically, sparky. Sparky is kind of lots of um, lots of sparkles, basically. Um, well-trodden, it's a rain, including sibling rivalry and the crushing weight of family expectations, which is a nice, uh, not only an adjective, weight is of course uh, a noun, but it's a nice combination, right? Crushing weight. We get this idea of it's heavy, um, and if you've seen the film, um, if you haven't, you definitely should, um, you get this same idea um, if you watch the film, the crushing weight of family expectations. What's interesting and unexpected is the film's subtle acknowledgement of culturally specific generational trauma. Culturally specific, um, a nice combination. Culturally is, of course, not, uh, well, it's an adverb, but um, specific is our adjective. Um, displacement. Right, we are in different generations. The film also boasts. Boasts is a verb, but it's a nice word, boasts. Which means that it, it has something, you know, when you boast, you are um you act like you're proud. Um and you, you basically show this a lot. And I think that's that's definitely the case with this soundtrack. Soundtrack of earworms, which is a nice word as well, which is a weird thing. I underlined this one. Soundtrack of earworms. Now, it has nothing to do with the bugs. So it has nothing to do with actual earworms. Um, it has more to do with the fact that this is a song that stays in your head, um, whatever happens. So that's why it's a soundtrack of earworms. Um Written by Lynn Manuel Miranda, and if we look at the title, we also have this uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda person, who is the person who wrote the song, and with a little help, indicates that she thinks um, that the musical on its own is very good, 
but with this particular song written by Lin Manuel Miranda, um, it gets an extra layer of goodness, an extra um, layer of sparkliness, if you like. Um, and we can find this in the subtitle of El Miranda's slinky soundtrack and unexpected subtleties. Uh, very nice, of course. So, what do we think of this review? Do we think this is a nice review? Would you say this is a good review? A review? Let's go to the comments and see what you guys come up with. Is this a good review? Oh, we can make a poll. Is this a good review? Yes, no. Do you like this review? Okay, some people said yes, some people said no. Um, for the person who said no, why isn't this a good review? What didn't you like of this review? Okay, um, why didn't you like the review? Okay, a bit chaotic, yes. Um, yeah, I can imagine. It doesn't, as I mentioned, it doesn't follow the structure quite well. Uh, it is, of course, a C1 level review, but I did this on purpose. I did it on purpose because I wanted you to have something a bit more difficult than you are now if you are now at C B2 level. So it's a C1 level review, um, a bit difficult, but that's okay. It's a bit chaotic. Um, what do we have? Well, yeah, we don't really have the structure that we want. However, I think she did a good job in um, capturing her nice opinion in that review. So I think this is fine. I think it's a nice review. Um, now, we are, we're going to write a more structured review. Um, and that's, of course, what we want to do. So the adjectives. Now, now we're going to write our own review, um, and writing our own review requires that we start with an outline. I always tell all of my students, before you start writing, open with an outline. Start with an outline. I said open because I wanted to tell you guys to open something on your computer, on your phone, or take a notebook so that you can write and make some notes on your own as well as we're writing. So you guys now have something that you want to review. So um, you're either reviewing your uh, something that you like or something that you have. Um, and I'm going to review my new Surface Pro 8, which I got last week. Um, it's kind of my birthday present to myself. And I'm going to write a review in B2, C1 level, on this uh, Surface Pro 8. Now you guys think of something that you want to review, open up a document on your computer, um, or maybe if you have a notebook, um, open up your notebook so that we can um, make some notes. Are you guys ready to write your review? Okay, let's start writing our review. So I'm reviewing uh, my Surface 
Pro 8. And as I mentioned, we want to have a, a structure um, and we want to have some facts in there as well. So let's start by collecting some information. Um, our structure of a review is we have our introduction. Then we get our um, summary. Then we have our body paragraphs. Let's do two body paragraphs. I think that's fine. And finally, we have our conclusion. So let's say that I'm going to use 500 words. And what I like to do is think about this, um, the division of the number of words. So we have 500 words. Let's say that we'll do uh, 200 for my uh, body paragraphs or 250 for my body paragraphs. Let's say that we'll do um, 50 for my conclusion, introduction, 50 for my um, conclusion. So then we have 350. Um, and we can do 150 for my summary. Do we then have 500 words? I'm, I'm not a very good mathematical person. Maths is not my best subject. Let's see. This is 100, 250. Yeah, we have our 500 words. Okay. Um, now we've done this. We now need to think of my arguments. What do I think of this Surface Pro 8? Let's start with the good things. And you guys as well, write down a few good things about the thing that you are reviewing. So a good thing of this Surface Pro 8 is that it's a good update. Especially when we compare it to the Surface Pro 7. It's a good update. Um, what else do I like about this Surface Pro 8? Oh, why do I think it's a good update? Maybe that's more interesting. Well, we have a new screen, which can do 120, um, a, a refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is, of course, very nice. It makes it very fluent, uh, fluid. We have smaller bezels, which makes it, gives it a modern look. That's also what we like. And it's faster because it has the elf, the, uh, the 11th generation Intel. Right, I think these are a good points as to why the review, uh, why this thing is a good update um, when compared to the Surface Pro 7. Now, we want to talk about some bad things. Things I don't like about the Surface Pro 7. And you guys as well, think of some bad things of the thing that you're reviewing. You probably have something to say, or something you don't like. Um, let's say that one of the bad things is that... Um, I wanted the screen to be a bit brighter, maybe. As it only gets 500 nits, which is a unit to describe brightness. And another poor thing. Um, what don't I like about... It's a bit heavier. It's heavier than the previous generation. So it's heavier than the previous generation. It's heavier than the previous generation Surface Pros. I think that's a good argument to say that it's heavier. 
So we have some good things, we have some bad things. Um, so I think we have some good points. Right. Now, you might think, let's get ready to write, but I first want to say something about paragraph structure. So I asked you guys to watch the video on paragraph structure, um, but I still want to cover paragraph structure briefly. So what do we know about paragraph structure? We know that paragraph structure, uh, that a good paragraph always follows either the T, X, 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 um, C structure, with topic sentence, we have our um, explanation, topic, explain, example, the third X was um, topic, explain, example, I don't know, let's, I need to check Google, what is the third? Let's see. Oh, expand and conclusion. So how does this work? Well, you have your topic sentence, which is your argument. Then we have our explanation, which kind of elaborates a bit on our argument. Then we have our example, which makes sense. It's an example of what I'm doing. I expand, so that's basically when I uh, comment on the example. And a nice concluding sentence that puts everything together, right? So then you get a nice round, um, round structure. Now the other structure you could use, which I usually explain and prefer, is the level structure. So you could say you have level one, which is our topic sentence. Level two, which is our explanation. Level three, which is our example. And sometimes you want to add a level four sentence which is our, um, in this case, kind of expansion. So that comments on the example. And <coughs> sometimes you want to have a level five, which is our conclusion. So as you can see, it's more or less the same, more or less the same, but it follows a different naming structure. So this is in levels. Are you guys still with me? Let me know in the comments, are you with me? Let me know now, what you are you reviewing? What are you reviewing? Um, let's take a, a second to recap. Tell me what you're reviewing in the comments. What is the thing you are reviewing? Okay, a, a series, very nice. Okay, we have someone reviewing a novel, it's also very nice. A lamp, okay, that's nice. Excellent. Trading view software, very nice as well. Very good, good things to review. Now you want to be specific when you're reviewing, otherwise you won't have that structure and you might get the chaos from the review that we've seen. Now she was specific, she really commented on um, the, um, 
you know, the, the music, that was a very important part of a review, but it was still a bit chaotic. Right, so let me show you how we go from this, good and bad things, to a very nice review, a structured review. So let's open up um, Microsoft Word. And let's start writing, basically. Well, sort of. We'll start with our paragraphs. So we will not do our introduction first or our summary first. We'll start with our paragraphs. Um, so I want to write that in my first argument, my level one is going to be that the Surface Pro 8 is a good update, update when compared to the Surface Pro 7. Now, I'm not going to make it beautiful. I'm just writing um, a, some sort of outline, the very basic structure of my review. I'll make it beautiful later on. So I'm going to write down that the Surface Pro 8 is a nice update when compared to the Surface Pro 7. I think this is nice. We have a nice topic sentence, it's clear. Um, you know, this is my argument. I like it because it is a nice update when compared to the Surface Pro 7. Now, we need to add our level 2. I need to explain what I mean with these, with my arguments. How is this a nice update when compared to the Surface Pro 7? So I might make a comparison. I might compare the Surface Pro 7 and to the Surface Pro 8 and say something like um, the Surface Pro 7 was a minor update to the Surface Pro 6. Um, it didn't have any new features. Oh. Nor did it oh, did it have any um, interesting upgrades. Now I might add some more, but as I mentioned, we're only writing the bare minimum now to create a good structure. Now I need to give my examples. What do I mean? Um, all right, level three. Oh, I might want to add here that the Surface Pro 8 does contain new features and interesting updates. Um, see how I use auxiliary do does contain instead of contains to put emphasis on the fact that it does have something instead of, um, you know, just saying contains. I can say the Surface Pro 8 contains new features and interesting updates, which is fine, but I'm making a comparison here between Pro 7 and 6 and 8. And I want to put extra weight on the fact that this this does have new features and updates. So um, I, will, I added auxiliary do. I'll put this in the chat for you guys to remember. I added... Right, <clears throat> now I need my examples. So what are the examples I have? Well, as you can see on my whiteboard just behind my screen, I have a new 120 hertz screen with a nice refresh rate. We have smaller bezels and we have the faster Intel 11 generation. So these are three examples of why this is an interesting update. So um, it features a new 120 hertz screen, which makes the um, user interface, also known as UI, buttery smooth. Did you see what I did there? I created an adverb from the word butter. When something is buttery smooth, it, it's very smooth. It, it glides, basically. So that's my first example. I want to add another example. Uh, I want to say that it has smaller bezels. And I'm going to comment on this and say, which gives it a modern look. Um, and I can say that it has the faster 
in 11th generation, but I'm going to leave that out. It's not very relevant. And the reason why it's not very relevant is that it's um, the Surface Pro 7 Plus also had the 11th generation, so it's not very relevant. Okay, so the Surface Pro 8 is a nice update when compared to the Surface Pro 7. Um, and now we need to talk about the bad things. Now we need to create another uh, paragraph. So um, the screen could be brighter and it's heavier than heavier than the previous generation. Okay. So I might I need a new topic sentence and that's going to be level one, the Surface Pro Eight. has some downfalls as well. Um, I want to explain this. What do I mean? I'll, oh, well, I'm not going to add extra things to make it more beautiful. We're just going to stick with the, um, with the bare minimum. So I might say um, the updates are nice but they come with a price. Oh, which is also a very nice thing, is more expensive. So my examples are that it's heavier than the Surface Pro 8, Pro 7. Um, and um, let's see, does it fit with the... Um, rest of the things. Well, we're not going to add the thing about it being brighter. It could have been brighter. We're going to add that it's more expensive. So, it is more expensive. And I think this is nice if we add that it's more expensive because that says something about the fact that we now have this 120 hertz screen. So, this links to this, which is nice. That's what we want. We want to link those um, things together. Yes, of course, Julie, you can watch the live stream after the, uh, when the stream has ended. Yeah. Okay, so we want to link those things together. Now we're going to make it more interesting, but before we do that, I want to talk about, um, and I want to add my facts and my introduction. So let's do that. So let's add our introduction um, or our summary in the summary, which is not a summary for this device, right? That is a bit difficult to, what are you summarizing? Um, but we could say something like um, every year they bring out a new device. Oh no, that might be more interesting for the introduction if we say that every year they bring out a new device. Um, oh yeah, we, I might give the stats. So I have the i5. Intel, oh, I have the Intel Core i5 with the 11, oh, that's a percent, i5 with 11 generation, um, 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gig SSD. Um, I have a black type cover, and it features the um, Surface Slim pen too. Right, these are interesting facts to mention. Right, so think of your own review. What are you going to put in your own review? Okay, um, I think we're ready to write. So, how am I going to make this? How am I going to make this more beautiful? Well, some things we need to think of when we're writing something are our um, adjectives, which I talked about, 
Um, and we want to talk about, we need to think of our linking words because linking words or markers are very useful in creating structure and adding flow. Flow means that you can read your article or review or whatever you're writing nicely, easily, and it has this nice um, readability to it, basically. Let's start with my, my um, paragraphs. So, um, my topic sentence is the Surface Pro 8 is a nice update when compared to the Surface Pro 7. Um, then we have the Surface Pro 8 was a minor update to the Surface Pro 6. It didn't have any new features, nor did it have any interesting upgrades. The Surface Pro 8 does contain a new does contain new features and interesting updates. Um, it features a new 120 hertz screen, which makes the user interface buttery smooth, and it has smaller bezels, which gives it a modern look. Now we do have a nice paragraph here, but we only have 76 words and I wanted to have 125 because 250 for both of the arguments so we need to add some more things what can we add the service pro 8 is a nice update when compared to the service pro 7 I might say that this came out in 20 what do we live now 2020 which came out in October I nearly added the Dutch October there October 2020 the Surface Pro 8 was a minor update to the Surface Pro 6. And what we could do to make it a bit more difficult is create is combine these two sentences. So we have a minor update compared to the Surface Pro 6. Hmm, how can I combine those? Well, let's add a conjunction. And maybe because is a very nice word to add. Because it didn't have any new features nor did it have any interesting upgrades and I might say a bit more I might say that it had the same large bezels the same um, screen and the same surface pen now see what I'm doing I'm going to say something about the Surface screen, right? In the Surface Pro 8, we have a new screen. So I added that the Surface Pro 7 had an old screen to make sure that, um, you know, we can link these things together. Right, so I added um, these parts to make it a bit more interesting. So what do we have now? It has the same large bezels, the same screen, and the same Surface Pen. The Surface Pro 8 does contain new and interesting features. Now what I could do, if I really want to add extra emphasis on the fact that the Surface Pro 8 is different, I can add something like, however. So I could say, the Surface Pro 8, comma, however, does contain new features and interesting updates. It features a new 120 hertz screen, which makes the user interface buttery smooth. It has smaller bezels, which gives it a modern look. Now, I want to combine those sentences as well, because this is a bit choppy. So what we're going to do is add and. Now, as you might know from my video on how to use the commas, we have and, and we get a new phrase. And because we have this new phrase, we need to add a comma here. So, and, I'm going to talk about something else, we need to add a comma. Which gives it a modern look. Um, now, you know, I might want to add a bit more. How many words do we have? We have 99. So I want to say that it's, it, it's on the same level as the um, iPad Pro, right? So I might say, these upgrades, and then we have our level four sentence, put it at the same level as Apple's iPad Pro with, oh, let's not say anything about the M1 chip. Okay, 
this is clear, right? We have a very nice structure. We have 125 words, I think. Yeah, 111. And that's fine. So let I'll indicate what my different levels are. Oh, I'm throwing with my mouse. This is not what we want. So um, yellow is level one. So this oh, this is my wrong feature. This one is I. This is my level one sentence. Let's make green level two. This is my level two sentence. Oh, I, I kind of have a mistake here. I say it has, but I want to say it had because it's in the past. You guys probably saw that. It had the same large screen, the same screen and the same source pen. Now we still are at level two because I'm not talking about the Surface Pro 8. The Surface Pro 8, however, oh, Surface Pro 8, however, does contain new features and interesting updates. And now I'm giving my arguments, which I do in a level three, uh, my examples. It features a new 120 hertz screen, which makes the user interface buttery smooth. It has smaller bezels, which gives it a modern look. And then we have a nice concluding sentence, which I'm going to make gray to put everything together. And as you can see, we have a very nice structure here. Great work. Now we're going to move on to the next paragraph. The Surface Pro 8 has some downfalls as well. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of connect um, these two paragraphs together. And how can I do this? Well, I usually call these things linking phrases or linking sentences. And using these linking phrases, we can um, use, we can connect these two paragraphs. So we get something like, although the Surface Pro 8 has nice upgrades, then we can leave out this thing, comma, it has some downfalls as well. And we have our linking word, right? Although, very nice linking word. Now, you might want to use another linking word because you want to kind of, you know, mix up your vocabulary. So let's have a look. Synonyms is though, even though, even if, and while. Let's see what the thesaurus says. Even if, even though, and while. Hmm. I think although sounds a bit better. So let's stick with although. So although the Surface Pro 8 has nice upgrades, it has some downfalls as well. Now, I already have this part here, right? So I already have, although it has nice upgrades, updates. Okay, it's not very consistent there, but it's fine. Um, they are nice. They come at a price. So we want to connect this. Um, I want to say it has some downfalls as well. Um, so we might say something like, so all the goodness comes with a price. Now I'm going to mention two things. And if you're watching this because you're doing your Cambridge exam, this is important. You want to include more linking words. So what we could do is basically say, first, first, The Surface Pro, oh, I need to use capitals because they're um, proper nouns. Surface Pro 8 is heavy, heavier, what do I mispronounce heavier all the time? Heavier than the Surface Pro 7 and Surface Pro 6. Now, I might um, add how heavy it actually is, so I need to look that up. Um, let's go to Google. Here we have Google, uh, Surface Pro 8 weight. Mm, it's 891 grams, okay. And now we can see what the Surface Pro 7 weight was. 
Uh, 1.7 pounds. 1.9 pounds. I don't know what 1.7 pounds is. 771 grams. Um... So we might add that something like add eight hundred and what was it eight hundred and ninety one and then we can add something like which were seven hundred and seventy one grams and now we need to find out what the Surface Pro six weight was. 700, oh, right, 770, um, okay, which were 771 grams and 770 grams, respectively. Now, respectively is a very nice word, because what does it mean? It means that we have one thing and another thing, so respectively. Okay, now we need to add our second thing. Secondly... Oh, no. No, we don't do secondly because we didn't do firstly. We do second. The Surface Pro 8 is more expensive. The base model starts at, I don't know, let's assume um, 1100 oh, well, let's say $1,000. Where the base model Surface Pro... 7 started at $900. Now we want to say something about this, and we want to say that you still need to buy your type cover. At the $290, $229 or $280 of the um, necessary type cover and pen combo, which means that you have a combination and you have a very expensive device. Now, I want to say, um, because we need more words, we only have 224, and this is only 90, so we want to say something about this iPad thing, the iPad Pro, for the, let's say, $1,300, you can get, let's say, not the, because we're not talking about a specific thing, for $1,300, you can also get an iPad Pro. Now, I want to add more, and I want to say, to kind of, you know, finish this comparison, I want to say that the iPad Pro is not a full laptop. So, I want to add this, and I want to combine them, because I want to create longer sentences, and we create longer sentences with conjunctions, right? Have a look at um, level one, level two. Uh, sorry, the sentence types in English, which I'll link in the, in the description. Um, we want to add something like but. So you can also get an iPad Pro. But the iPad Pro does not feature a full desktop operating system. Can we do something else instead of but? So let's check our um, synonyms. Although, but then, ah, but then it's a nice combination. But then the iPad Pro does not feature a full desktop operating system. Now, I wanted to mention formality for a second because um, we're not writing very formally. It is a bit informal. And you can see that because I use you here. I use lots of its. So, but that's not our aim. We're not writing very formally. So let's end our review with a conclusion. Um, and we can start with in conclusion. In conclusion. Now it's very important that you remember that you don't want to add new information to your conclusion.
Your conclusion is really your conclusion. So that means that we don't add new information. Very important, very important. In conclusion, and then let's repeat our main argument. The Surface Pro 8 is a nice update, and we're going to look for a synonym for nice in a second, to the Surface Pro 7. I might want to say that it's a w an upgrade that's worth it. So we need to look for a different word. What we're going to do is we're going to go to thesaurus.com and we're going to see whether we can find it. So nice. Okay. Likeable, agreed agreeable, precise, neat, refined. Mm. Nifty would nifty fit. Excellent. I think excellent would fit. Let's check whether we can use nifty. Attractive, stylish, or smart. Very good, fine, excellent. Substantial and sizable. I think sizable and substantial are also both fitting for this, um, this review. So let's use nifty. Um, before we do that, oh, it says middle school level. Let's see where nifty appears on the Cambridge dictionary level. So, nifty, it, does it say something about the Sefer level? No, it doesn't say anything about the Sefer level. Hmm. No. No information about Sefer level, but that's fine. We can still use Nifty. So we're going to say that the Surface Pro 8 is a Nifty update. Let's call it upgrade to the Surface Pro 8. So we see whether we can find a different word for upgrade as well. Let's check it out. Upgrade. Boost, enhance, increase, promote. This is the verb upgrade, not the noun upgrade. Antonyms, no, we don't want antonyms, raise, okay, hmm, hmm, let's go to dictionary.com, what can we find, does this give upgrade synonyms, okay, let's check the dictionary, upgrade is B2 level, okay, let's see, what can we see, related words and phrases, making things better, alleviate, that's not what we want, Liven somebody up, liven, as you can see. Come on, energy, I'm in a mood, I don't feel this way. No, we don't want to use liven. Let's see, what else can we find? A shot in the arm, piece of software, okay. Hmm. Revolutionize, revitalize. Self, tonic, sharpen, salvage. No, we don't have any other words we can use. If you guys know another word we can use instead of upgrade, let me know in the comments. Um, right, so the in conclusion, the Surface Pro 8 is a nifty upgrade to the Surface Pro 7. I want to summarize why. Right? It features um, which is a conclusion, which is a phrase we've used very often, but we're going to find a synonym in a second. It features a one hundred it features a new screen smaller bezels and it's um, very fast. Now we also want to use a different word there but we're going to look later. Um, it's superior over the iPad Pro because it features a full-fledged operating system. Um, now we need to end broadly. I want to end with a nice remark. So let's say something like, the question is, can Microsoft top this year's Surface Pro 8 when creating, when developing the Surface Pro 9. We'll have to wait until October to figure out, to find out. I think this is a nice conclusion, right? 
Okay, let's look at our vocabulary. It features. We want to use a different word than features because we've used that thing quite some times. So back to thesaurus.com. Features. Want the verb form feature. Advertise, emphasize, and promote. Star. Mm, let's see. Play up, set off, stress, star, promote. Hmm. Let's see what we can find here. Feature. We need the verb form. It's a B2 word. Ah, C, uh, B2 word um, at C2 level. To include or something as an important part. Let's see, what can we find? Factor, forget. Oh, we can use pack. That's a nice that's a nice word. I think pack does the trick. Package. Oh. That's weird. Oh. Instead of of. Okay. Weird. Um so we're going to say pack because we've used it packs a new screen, smaller bezel, and it's very fast. Superior over the iPad Pro. Now we need to check the word superior because as you can see, I've made a mistake. I've included um, the incorrect phrasal verb because it's superior to. So mind the phrasal verb. Okay, excellent. So how does this all work together. Oh, we still have our introduction and summary to write. So let's do that. Let's write our introductions and summary. So we'll start with our summary and we'll say this year's in uh, Surface Pro 8 um, has gotten new internals. My version, feet, ah, I wanted to say feature again, but we're going to say pack. Packs an Intel Core i5 and we're going to put the 11th gen here, an 11th gen Intel Core i5 with 16 gigs of RAM and 265 gigs of storage. What else can I say about this? Uh, Microsoft upgraded the design um, with a slightly rounded design giving it a softer feel of course you can say update instead of upgrade but there is of course a difference between the word but I think in general you can use the same word but a slightly rounded design giving it a softer feel um, what else can we say it still fee it still has Toshiba SSDs, which oh, and we need to add which NVM to NVMe SSDs, which are replaceable. <coughs> I got the black type cover. Oh, what did I do? I got the black type cover, which includes the new second generation Surface Slim Pen with haptic feedback. The haptic feedback, oh, not all apps um, work with the haptic feedback but most stock apps do. However, how does the Surface... Oh, we could say something like, is the Surface Pro 8 worth your hard-earned money? Thank you very much, Ozobek. Ozobek. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with your friends. Okay, so we now have my summary. And we need to add an introduction. We have 
378 words, so we do have some extra words left, but we can do something in our introduction as well. Let's say that Microsoft hasn't surprised anyone over the last few years with their Surface Pro device. Very nice introduction, right? I give a verdict. It's good, but they didn't surprise anyone. Um, the aha factor of the first revelation of the Surface Pro back in, what was it, 2015 or so? No, 2013, I think. Has worn off. And we have a very nice long subject here. The aha factor of the first revelation, which I don't think is the right word, so we're going to check. Oh no, it's still, it's still, it's a nice word. It's a C2 word, by the way. So if you include this in your Cambridge review, it's very nice. The first revelation of the Surface Pro back in 2013 has worn off. And customers have turned to Apple for the best um, pen, uh, for the best pen device, pen tablet, pen, I don't know, what can we use? Um, for the best pen input device. This doesn't mean that the Surface Pro um, 2 to 6, 7 weren't special. And then we might add uh, a dash. They were perfectly fine. But other than the Surface Pro X, Microsoft hasn't done anything special. This year, however, and we might want to use a different word for however as well. This year, however, they done it. They combined the look and feel of their uh, slow surface Pro X with the power of the Surface Pro line. We can now, oh, and now we can end with a question. Does it finally stand up against the iPad Pro? Nice, nice introduction, right? Um, we have a review, 481 words. Excellent. This is very nice. How are you reviews going? Did you see what I did in my um, introduction? I started very broadly. I talked about Microsoft not surprising anyone over the last few years with their Surface Pro device. So this is very broad. Oh. Then, then, I, um, you know, I kind of focused more on what we were what we're talking about. In this case, the Surface Pro X compared it with the Surface Pro X, iPad Pro. I did say a few things about the iPad Pro, so that's also very nice, very interesting. Um, and then, you know, we have. I, I need to make sure that even if, even though I mention this, I do need to go back and compare it to this. Um, iPad Pro, which I've done, right? I did this in my in the rest of my work, and that's very good because this means um, that I don't have redundant information. And this is also the reason why you always want to write your introduction at the end, right? You don't want to write your introduction um, while you haven't written your body paragraphs yet, because you don't know what you're going to say in your body paragraphs, right? Now we need a new, uh, nice title. We have the right number of words, 481. We need a nice title. Um, um, let's do something funny. Let's do, let's make it a bit bigger and let's say, 
Um, watch out Apple. Microsoft is... Um, Microsoft has overtaken you. Now, I still refer to this Apple thing quite sometimes, and some critical people might say, well, you know, it's not that much about Apple. But I think we did mention Apple sufficiently um, to kind of justify the title of Watch Out Apple, um, Microsoft is right behind you, or Microsoft has over overtaken you. Okay, excellent, guys. Good work. I hope your review looks good as well. Um... If you want to um, get some feedback, feel free to message me your review, but that's only for you guys. So only for the people who, um, who are in this live stream today, you can get feedback on your review. Now, let's round off because we've done everything I wanted to do. Um, let's go back to PowerPoint and see what we've done. So in today's workshop, we looked at um, the parts of a review we looked at an example of a review, um, in this case, Encanto, and we wrote a review together. Now, we also looked at review language, right? We, we looked at the adjectives. I've looked at adjectives in Encanto. We wrote a review together, um, and we looked at a review outline. So I think we've done everything you had to do to write a good review. Now, um, if you want to support me, and if you like these um, workshops I would definitely appreciate it if you were to buy me a coffee I'm going to share a link in the uh, in the chat for you um, you don't have to of course uh, everything is free but if you think you know with my COVID um, um, which I have now unfortunately if you want to buy me a cup of tea because that's better than a coffee use the link in the uh, chat to buy me a cup of coffee. But again, you only have to. Uh, you only have to if you want to. So here's my buy me a coffee link. For now. Um, oh, we have someone, Autumn Breeze, who says that she is, or he is only at 130 words. Right, so what can you do now? You want to do some research, which is good. And maybe because you're writing a series, um, you want to include a bit more from the plot summary. You know, I'm not doing a series, so we don't need that much information from the device. But in your case, you might want to include a bit more information from the series. So some, some facts, some characters, who plays what, um, as we've seen in the Encanto review. Again, guys, if you want feedback on your review, um, email me your review. I'm going to send out this thing with the PowerPoint and my own example review to everybody who was here or has missed this review, uh, missed this workshop. My next workshop might be next week, Thursday, but that depends on how my um, COVID progresses. Um, I hope and I pray that, um, you know, it will be over in a day um, and that, you know, I can be in quarantine without any uh, illnesses. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Right. If there are no questions, I'm checking the chat. If there are no questions... I would like to thank everyone for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, there's no video coming out this week because of my COVID, um, but I hope to see you guys soon in a next a workshop. My next writing workshop is probably going to be advanced review um, or intermediate essay. Don't forget, you can still enroll for the content and language class, and the content and language class is going to be on Zoom because we're using other people's materials, so we can't do that on YouTube. For now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in one of my next workshops.